Youngstown State has been the Division I AA football power of the 90s, winning the national championship two of the past three seasons. Led by junior quarterback Mark Brungard and intense head coach Jim Tressel, the Penguins have steamrolled through the playoffs once again. A balanced attack and a stingy defense as the nation's top-ranked team thinking about national championship number three. Boise State Broncos have reason to cheer as well after last week's come-from-behind win over perennial power Marshall. Quarterback Tony Hilby leads a high-tech offense that features the running and receiving of Casey Adams. Today, they lead BSU in search of its second national title. It's the Youngstown State Penguins and the Boise State Broncos for the Division I AA Football National Championship on CBS Sports. from Marshall University Stadium in Huntington, West Virginia for the third straight year. It's the site of the Division I AA National Championship game. This afternoon, it's the Youngstown State Penguins and the Boise State Broncos. Hello, everyone. I'm Sean McDonough, and it's great to have you with us. Youngstown State is in the title game for the fourth straight year. They're trying to win it for the third time in the history of the one AA playoffs. No team has won three titles in four years. I'm joined by Steve Davis. Steve, we have seen the Penguins before, and this year's team is similar to those from recent years. It's solid and tough, but not very flashy. Well, what they like to do is they dominate you with their strength and speed, and two players that are perfect illustrations, Sean Patton. He's their running back. The job is, is to control the tempo of the game with the running game, and that's what his job is all day today. And then defensively, Leon Jones is their inspirational leader. He's a guy that makes big plays all over the field. They want to take Boise State out of the running game and force them into a one-dimensional passing game early. Well, recent years have been kind to Youngstown State. The same cannot be said for the Broncos. As a matter of fact, last year, Boise State went 3-8, and eight, but some junior college transfers arrived. Here they are at 13-1 and one and in the title game. And in sharp contrast to the Penguins, they're a very flashy team. Well, they win with finesse and overachievement. Two players, Tony Hildy, their quarterback, a 55% quarterback. They put a lot of pressure on him to execute the offense. It is really a quarterback-type game. And then defensively, Joe O'Brien. This guy is the guy that makes everything happen. He's the emotional leader. He's the guy that keeps them focused on the team. And he's a guy that you're real excited. They've got to really put Youngstown State in a tough position today with his kind of play. The folks have made the trip. From Youngstown, Ohio, this game is sold out despite the absence of the home team, Marshall University. Youngstown State comes in at 13-0-1, the only blemish, a tie in their regular season opener against Stephen F. Austin in the playoffs in round one. They ended Steve McNair's career at Alcorn State. They came from behind to beat Eastern Kentucky in the second round, and last week they defeated Montana out of the Big Sky Conference. The Penguins of Coach Jim Tressel in the championship game for their fourth straight year. champions of the Big Sky Conference, Boise State, at 13-1, the only loss, a one-point defeat in the regular season to Idaho State. Here in the playoffs, wins all in Boise against North Texas, Appalachian State, and Marshall University. Last week against the Thundering Herd, they came from 24-7 down to pull out the game in the late stages, and that's been the trademark of this team all season long. Dramatic comebacks, the Broncos feel they're a team of destiny for Coach Pokey Allen. and the Broncos for the national championship will have the opening kickoff right after this.
CBS Sports presentation of the Division I AA Championship is sponsored by Oldsmobile and your authorized Aurora retailers. Zima, the refreshing alcohol beverage. And by Canon, a world leader in cameras and office equipment. I think the future of YSU lies as it has in the past in its students. The overall look and feel of the campus is one of the best for a modern university. Here on the YSU campus, we have people from many different places. I love YSU's atmosphere because everyone you meet has a very positive attitude. People really go out of their way to engage students in the classroom. If you challenge yourself and move forward, you can be more than you may think you can be. Boise State, Idaho's largest university, is located in a picturesque setting in the heart of Idaho's capital city. Here, along the banks of the Boise River, more than 15,000 students live and learn. Many are attracted by the special quality of life at Boise State, where you'll find excellent academic programs, a talented, caring faculty, and one of the nation's most progressive cities surrounded by a wonderland of natural beauty. Join us at Boise State University, where dreams and opportunities meet. Welcome back to Marshall University Stadium. Nice day for this time of the year. Warm, 51 degrees. Very little breeze to speak of. There is the chance of rain, however. We had rain here last night, and just as Paul Massaro approached the ball, it blew off the team. Well, despite the lack of uh, stiff wind here this afternoon, there is enough of a breeze to knock it off the tee and delay the opening kickoff. Youngstown State kicking the ball to Willie Bowen, a fine kick returner. As a matter of fact, two big kickoff returns for the Broncos last week helped key the comeback against Marshall. Bowen's an honorable mention all Big Sky Conference selection as a return man. And Youngstown State has had some problems from time to time this year with kickoffs. As a matter of fact, Massaro is one of three kickers they've used to kick off. He's had a problem with depth on the kickoffs, and he's also prone to kicking it out of bounds. Now they bring in Vance Mays to hold it. And we're underway again, a short kickoff. It comes down at the 23-yard line to Jermaine Hudson. He's across midfield and knocked out of bounds by the place kicker, Massaro at the 41-yard line of Youngstown State. A 35-yard return. This is the very thing that started Boise State or kept them in the ball game last week. They've been able to do very, have a strong uh, kickoff return team. He's able to get outside early in the ball game off the short kick. Youngstown just did not uh, pursue well on the opening kickoff. And Boise State quickly to the line of scrimmage, led by Tony Hildy, the sophomore quarterback for Pendleton, Oregon. Looking to throw on first down, man open, Ryan Akibi, down the sideline and out of bounds. Whistled out back at the 26-yard line, good for a first down, credit Reggie Brown with the tackle. Gain of 15 on the first play from scrimmage. Hildy is the quarterback. Backs and receivers. Adams, the featured back. He's an excellent runner and receiver. Draven, a blocking fullback. Housey and Akibi, the receivers. And Zimmerman, the tight end. And all of these offensive linemen will be back next year. Jeffrey, Venus, Kaufman, Toyos, and LaPayne. Kaufman and Toyos, first team all Big Sky selections this year. Tripped up after crossing the 25. Leon Jones made the tackle for the Penguins. Coaches on both sides say Jones is in on every tackle. It's a 3-4 look for Youngstown State. Jethro, Khan, and Hopkins, the front three. Hopkins is 14 sacks. Jones, the standout linebacker. The rest of the core solid as well with Lee, Jean-Baptiste, and Dillingham. And a veteran secondary. All of them seniors, Brown, Weaver, Mays, and Smith. And all of them excellent students. Each of them had a grade point average this semester of 3.0 or better. On second and six, the play action pick. He's in trouble on the blitz. Reggie Brown wrapped him up and threw Hildy down at the 32-yard line. Loss of 10 on the play. 
Youngstown State has not shown a propensity to go and blitz in the ball game very often. They like to just play strong defense. Reggie Brown kind of crowded up from the outside, came from a strong safety position to put it on Hildy. Broncos trying to take advantage of the 36-yard kickoff return by Jermaine Hudson. Now at the Youngstown State 32 and facing third down and 16. And they took too much time. The play clock expired. The officials from the ECAC and the referee is Joe Arnon. Dead ball foul, illegal delay, offense, five-yard penalty, still third down. Pokey Allen in his second season as head coach of the Boise State Broncos three and eight a year ago. But as we mentioned, with the influx of junior college talent, brought in 23 JC players, 16 of them have actually played this season. They're in the championship game at 13 and one and looking at third down and 21 now. Hildy. Gained a couple, but not nearly enough for the first down. He got to the 34. Reggie Lee made the tackle for the Penguins. This would be a long field goal try. Greg Erickson is the field goal kicker. Pokey Allen says comfortably his range is 45 yards, but they have tried a couple of field goals this year with better than 50. And this one will be a 51-yard try for Erickson from Redmond, Washington. He has never kicked a field goal of more than 50 yards in his career. Oh, for five from this distance. And that doesn't have enough. His career long is 47. And that one came up three or four yards short. So after the kickoff return, the Broncos cannot capitalize. Youngstown State on offense after this. No score. We're pleased to be joined here today by Dave Logan on the sidelines. Dave? Thank you very much, Sean. You know, the defense of Boise State just took the field. One of their key players, DeWan Miller, interesting guy, born 22 years ago without his left hand. He is not handicapped. He's a player. If you see the guy return one for a touchdown, don't be surprised. Very inspirational guy. This guy can play. Sean? We had an interception in the playoffs on the Broncos' run to the national championship. And his story has been chronicled in publications throughout the country this week in anticipation of the national championship game, including a wonderful story about the one of the New York Times. Mark Brungard is the junior quarterback and starting the national championship game for the Penguin for the second straight year. As expected, they were up to Sean Patton on their first play from scrimmage. He got to the 37. Rungard is from New Middletown, Ohio. He's 26-2-1 in his career as a starting quarterback at YSU. Patton, the featured back. Inglis, a blocking fullback. Zwistler, the possession receiver. Boykin has excellent speed. Terleski, the tight end. And it's an all-senior offensive line featuring the first-team All-American Chris Samarone at center. Ray Miller, a third-team All-American selection. The group is solid, including Tomas, Miller, DeVicchio, and Fogel. Second and seven. Short drop, and the pass is complete to the far sideline to Trent Boykin. It was Juan Miller who made the tackle. Gain of five, the Penguins still shy of the first down by a couple. Front four for Boise State, Joe O'Brien, the Big Sky Defensive Player of the Year, Thompson, Fafita, and Weston, the rest of the front. Outstanding linebackers, Vince Watson, Brian Smith, and the Canadian, Stephen Reed. And in the secondary, Rashid Gale might be the best defensive back in one double-A football, according to his coaches, Keith Watt Green, Chris Cook, and Juan Miller. Third and two. The Penguins at their own 42. One guy throws and passes up to Interesting, Steve, the third down and two, the power running team, the Penguins, went to a pass play. Well, they, they really are trying to take advantage of a lot of this man coverage that Boise State plays. That's their style of play. They they stay away from zone, do a lot of man, and trying to take advantage of it. That creates some opportunities for a running team. Tom Dreslinski is the punter. Tim Dreslinski, pardon me. And that's not a very good punt off the side of his foot, and it took a Boise State bounce down at the 39-yard line. 
by Jeff Johnston. Just a 19-yard punt for Jeslinski, the junior from Kingsville, Ohio. Back after this. Jim Trestle, the head coach of the Youngstown State Penguins, also now the athletic director at that school, in his ninth year as head football coach, and looking for his third national championship. His father was an outstanding coach as well, Dr. Lee Trestle at Baldwin Wallace College. He won a Division II national championship at that school. Tony Hilde, play action fake on first down. Throws it into the flat. Caught by the tight end, Bernie Zimmerman, for a short game. He was chopped down by Reggie Brown at the 43-yard line, a gain of four for the Broncos. We talk about the improvement of the Broncos, and part of that is Zimmerman arrived to play this year, started a collegiate career at the University of Idaho, left that team in 1991, hadn't played since until this year. Walked on at Boise State. the intended receiver and Hildy threw it over his head. Boise runs an attack that they call a, a multiple movement tight end attack so you'll see a lot of motion. What they try to create out of the just like the, the 49er offense, a lot of mismatches, a lot of movement. See if they can get you mixed up or matched up improperly. Try to get some advantages by their formation. Third down and five. There is no score in the Division I AA Football National Championship game. He's played four minutes and 15 seconds. He's going to offense for the second time. He'll be with plenty of time. Throws. Caught. First down. In the Youngstown State Territory, Garrett Houski. His first catch of the ball game, and Leon Jones made the tackle after a gain of 11. This time, Youngstown goes with two deep secondary back, and they've got five people dropping in that middle zone area, and Tony Hildy, the quarterback, has got to find the open area, find the man. He has to drive the ball hard. With his shoulder separation, that's the most difficult throw to, for him to make right now. That's the one where he's got to put the speed and zip on the ball. First and ten, Adam. Trying to bounce off the tackle, but could not. It was Chris Inglis who brought him down. He is the twin brother of the fullback Dan Inglis. They are sophomores from Austintown, Ohio, in the Youngstown area. About 75% of the players come from what Jim Tressel calls the state of Youngstown, about a 100-mile radius around the city of Youngstown, Ohio. No gain, second and 10. Hildy, also slowed by a sprained ankle, managed to gain a couple down to the 42-yard line before Leon Jones made the tackle. We've called his name several times already. Coaches on both sides says, Jones is unbelievable. He's in on every tackle, and that's been the case today. Very highly regarded, great skill player, a guy that just is a student of the game in every sense of the word, was an All-American player in the Division I AA level and an outstanding leader on this Youngstown State team. Third down and six, no score. 9.05 left in the first quarter. Hildy dropped the football as he was sacked, and the Broncos have it back. Alex Toyos recovered the fumble. It was Jermaine Hopkins who tackled Hildy and knocked the ball free. Hopkins, the junior from Miami, Florida, 14 sacks, a school record this year. This is what Youngstown State does so well. They're just so strong with good team speed all over. They just collapse around him. The ball comes free, and they're fortunate to get the ball. And the Broncos will punt for the first time. Danny Weeks is the punter. Low line drive punt. And it goes out of bounds on a hop inside the 20 at the 19-yard line. 8.23 remaining in the first quarter. There is no score. In a scoreless game with 8.23 remaining in the first quarter. Tom McDonough with Steve Davis and Dave Logan. 
Happy to have you with us for the Division I AA Football National Championship game from Huntington, West Virginia. Run guard, good play action take. Don Dwistler's open, first down and more. Dwistler out to the 37-yard line. Tackled by Vince Watson after a gain of 18. Number five, Don Dwizzler, is wide open. They're in man coverage, and nobody picks him up. He's a little bit of a delay route, and he's coming across the middle. Run guard does a wonderful job of finding him. Everybody's chasing him, but nobody picked him up. Good call by the quarterback. Youngstown State coaches say the thing that Run guard does best is get them into the right play. If they have a bad play call, he's smart enough to make the change in the line of scrimmage. Another play action pass, and it's broken up by Dwan Miller. Intended for Trent Boykin, and Miller made the play. You kind of get the feeling that Youngstown State's not convinced that Dewan Miller with his one arm can go play man-to-man -man coverage and make the tackle. Watch Trent Boykin. I mean, he uses every bit of his body, Dewan Miller, to break up the play. Dewan runs a 4-5-40, outstanding speed. He can bench press 300 pounds with special equipment that helps him lift weights. Standing basketball and baseball player in high school. High school baseball coach in Rome Center Field like Willie Mays. And Boise State decided to recruit Miller for football when they watched him play basketball in high school. He stole the ball, dove on the floor to pick it up, got up, went in and slam dunked it, and the coach said, we'll take him. Yeah, we'll have him. <laughs> He's ours. After the short gain from Patton, Third down and seven, facing the Penguins. No score midway through the opening quarter of this national championship game. Brungard scrambles away from Percher, and it's stuck well short of the first down by Keith Walt Green. The junior safety from Inglewood, California, dropped Brungard close to the line of scrimmage. This is a good Boise State defensive football team. A lot of times people from the big sky, or at least the criticism might be they don't play defense. They do play defense, and Boise State plays it very well. Much better punt this time by Tim Dreslinski over the head of Casey Adams, and it takes a Youngstown bounce, and they'll down it inside the five-yard line. It was Randy Smith who hustled down, and Dreslinski, after a 19-yard punt on his first effort, bounces back with a 57-yarder. They'll spot the ball at the four. When we met with the coaches, they talked about the importance of really giving the time that's needed for the kicking game. They take great pride in what they do in the kicking game in total, and boy, here was outstanding effort. There's 11 guys flying for the ball to try to make the play and put Boise State in poor field position. Back at the four-yard line. On the ground with Casey Adams. He's driven back by Reggie Lee after crossing the five. Adams rushed for 1,275 yards during the regular season and three playoff games and picked up 205 more. First team, all big sky as a running back this year. Boise State really has to have some running game to be successful today against this very tough-nosed, speedy defense at Youngstown State. They cannot expect to put the ball game totally in the hands of Tony Hildy all day long. Second and eight from the six-yard line. And again, they keep it on the ground with Adams. He is upended and slammed down. Reggie Lee and Andre Jethro get a couple of points for the takedown. They slam Adams to the turf at the nine. Casey Adams has been the uh, mainstay of their running attack. He's made big plays all season, eight games with over 100 yards. He's having a tough go early against this tenacious and very speedy Youngstown front four. Youngstown State defense gives up an average of 9.9 .9 points per game. Tremendous speed at every position. Play action pass. Hildy in trouble. Hildy sacked for a loss of one. Jermaine Hopkins finished him off. 
Speed gives you wonderful dimensions as a defensive football team. They try to get action away and flow, and they do a great job. Paul Pond, 99, of forcing Hildy back inside and letting up his teammates clean it up. Now Danny Weeks cutting to his own end zone. And this is a better effort than his first punt. Trent Boykin on the return from the Nathan Gillum down on special teams to drop Trent Boykin immediately. 39-yard punt, one-yard return. And the Penguins go back on offense with 427 remaining in the scoreless first quarter. Pony Allen, quite a character. As a matter of fact, last week, as Boise State was trying to sell out its home game against Marshall. Boise State had Coach Allen go on TV, say, if you sell out this game, if you buy more than 20,000 tickets, on Monday, I will ride a Bronco down Broadway. And they have better than 20,000 at Bronco Stadium. And Coach Allen was a man of his words. Sean Patton, the ball carrier. Chris Cook made the tackle. At the 45, battle up Pokey. This was on Monday in the snow in Boise. And Coach Allen from Missoula, Montana. He's no stranger to the saddle. I knew it, Joel. They have great fans in Boise, and they did their part, so Coach Allen did his. And the team really takes on the personality of the coach, and they, they really have a loose style, but they call themselves family, and they do a wonderful job coaching and building relationships with these players. Second and seven. Rare carry for the fullback, Dan Inglis, carrying the ball for just the third time this season. He is the backup fullback, Mac Gilchrist, the starting fullback this year, but out last week against Montana with an ankle injury, so it's Inglis, ordinarily a blocker on the carry. Sione Fafita made the tackle at the 41, about three yards short of the first down. Here's Inglis, who was a linebacker right up until the start of this season when they moved him to fullback. Patton alone back. Four receivers split out for Brungard. Short drop, and it is intercepted. Chris Cook needs a block or two. Chris Cook inside the 10 and tackled at the five-yard line. The quarterback, Brungard, made the touchdown-saving tackle a return of 57 by the senior from Los Angeles, California. What they did is they went man on the outside receivers, inside receivers, they go zone, and what's happened, he throws it right into the coverage. Everyone's dropped underneath, and he just throws a poor ball, missed the receiver, the receiver went on a, a go route, and he threw it on an out route, and that's what made the big play for Chris Cook. Big return, big play. His third interception of the season, first in the playoffs, officially a 58-yard return. Make his bootleg, now he'll be throws in the end zone, touchdown! Randy Matishok, the backup tight end, and the Broncos are on the board. attempt the extra point. He's 44 of 47 in PATs this year. And that one is right down the middle. The assignment of Tony Hildy, the quarterback, early on is to execute. That's his job and responsibility. Outstanding job of showing poise. He wants to go outside to the outside receiver, but he waits for Mattishock, has the patience, and the poise and the confidence to wait on him, dragging him across and throws it perfectly. Watch Hildy. Great quarterbacks understand their offense. He's, ex he's getting pressure, but he waits. His head is moving around, finding the open guy, executing the offense. That's his one assignment. He does it very well. Randy Matishok in his first year at Boise State is one of those junior college transfers of whom we've been speaking. He's from College of the Redlands. And he had two touchdown catches in the regular season. That's his first of the playoffs. And the Broncos lead 7 to nothing. Just one play after the 58-yard interception return by Chris Cook. 
And a dangerous return man for Youngstown State in Randy Smith. As a matter of fact, in recent weeks, the opponents have been squibbing the ball down the field. And this is a line drive kickoff. Fielded by Omari Parks. And the true freshman brought the ball out to the 35. Omari Parks to the return. 15-yard return. Chadwick Bird made the tackle for Boise State. What's really uh, unique about the turn of events, Sean, is that Mark Brumgard, he makes few mistakes. He's thrown seven interceptions coming into the season. This entire Youngstown State team, they just don't make mistakes. They don't turn the ball over, and it's rare that they make those kind of problems happen to them. And in leading the Penguins to the national championship last year, Brumgard finished four interceptions, only 11 INPs in the last two seasons for Brumgard as the starter. As a matter of fact, Youngstown State this season on the end of this game, plus 22 for the year's turnover. Patton on the option look. The Penguins don't do this very often, but just enough to make the defense concerned about it. Juan Miller and Chris Cook knocked him out of bounds. The option play is an excellent play to run against a defense that runs a lot of man coverage because what happens, the outside receiver, the perimeter people are manned up, and that causes oftentimes they'll turn and run with the receiver, and then all of a sudden they've got to play defense, run defense, and they're not there because they're playing man coverage. So that's why you're going to see it more today against Boise State. The Broncos have done a good job stopping Pat and he has four carries, 11 yards. Run guard. To the near side through the hands of Dan Inglis. He was open and might have gone a long way because the nearest defensive back, Rashid Gale, slipped down. Flag on the play. Really, we've got two fine quarterbacks on the field. Mark Brumgard, again, he's got poise and confidence. He's a junior, great leader of this football team. He looked for about his third receiver in English, number 49, and uh, Dan just uh, doesn't catch the football. He is wide open, too. They're marching off yardage, and a big one, 15-yarder against the Broncos. Roughing the passer, defense, 15-yard penalty, first down. That moves the ball into Boise State territory at the 47-yard line. 7-0, Broncos. 2.25 remaining in the first quarter. Here in Huntington, West Virginia. This city has once again done an outstanding job hosting the one double football championship. As Marcy University, the whole school, wide open, point and it's over his head. They had two receivers there and only one defender. It was Rasheed Gale, obviously a busted coverage by the Broncos, but Brungard had too much on it for the speedy Boykin. That time, Youngstown State tried again to take advantage of man coverage outside. Both the outside receivers go down the field, and really, he reads the, the open man, obviously, and, and uh, so he went to the right side and was just overthrown. Second and 10. Youngstown State really going against the style that served him so well the last few years here in the first quarter. It's a power running football team much more diverse on offense here in the first quarter than they ordinarily are. Vince Watson and Brian Smith combined to tackle Sean Patton after a gain to the 45. Headed him with a gain of two, third down and eight. Upcoming. Marshall last week against Boise State had a great deal of success in the first half running right at them. It's really, like you said, surprising that Youngstown State is somewhat away from their style of play where they feel like that they can control you with their strength and speed and run right at you. Penguins are 0 for 3 on third down here in the first quarter. Three receivers to the right. Brungard wants a timeout. The play clock was about to expire. Coming up next on CBS Sports, get a look at the candidates for the men, women's, and scholastic players of the year on the RCA Player of the Year preview, hosted by Billy Packer and Andrea Joyce. That's coming up next 
on CBS Sports. And later today, CBS presents NCAA College Basketball. Bobby Knight's Indiana Hoosiers off to a slow start by their standards this season, and they're up against number three, Kansas. That's at 4 Eastern time this afternoon on CBS Sports. Youngstown State Band. Certainly uh, the Penguins have the better of it in the stands with a shorter trip to come to Huntington than those who follow the Boise State Broncos. And some of the locals, the Marshall fans, might have been inclined to cheer for Boise State as the underdog team playing the perennial power Youngstown. But Coach Corky Allen uh, inadvertently referred to this area as Boonsville at a press conference not long ago and some of the people in the Huntington area took exception to that. He actually got confused with Appalachian State, which is in Boone, North Carolina. When somebody asked him where Marshall was, he said, I think it's in Booneville. He didn't mean it to be derogatory, but it was taken that way here locally, so uh, some of the fan favor that might have been directed at the Broncos is not there. And the good kitty people of Huntington have reminded him often. Yes, <laughs> there have been signs uh, in the community saying, welcome to Boonesville, your temple of doom, Coach Allen. Whitler is open and it went through his hands. Jason Payne, the nickelback, had the coverage and they've had a chance to have the Penguins to make some big plays with the passing game here, but the pass has been just off the mark. Well, this is not a come out and throw it all over the football field kind of team ordinarily in the Penguins. And they've been leaning on the throw here in the first quarter. Boise State leads 7-0. Breslinski, Adams has to let it bounce. And the Penguins let it roll inside the tent. And it finally stops at the nine-yard line. 36-yard punt for Tim Dreslinski. Once again, here's Dave Logan. Oh, thanks, Sean. You know, when you're down here on the Boise sideline, listening to these guys talk, the mood is absolutely great. They're saying just one more score, and they feel they have Youngstown State. They said this is a team that hasn't had to come from behind much this year, so it's going to be difficult for them to try and get back in a football game. One more score, Sean. They believe they have it. Back upstairs. And despite the fact that the Penguins have been here in recent years, the Broncos have not, we didn't sense any jitters on the part of the Boise State players and coaches as we talked to them in recent days. Hildy dropped the snap and fell on it near the line of scrimmage. This is a very loose Boise State team despite this situation. I think that goes back to what you were saying, Steve. It's a reflection of Pokey Allen. Absolutely. The, the two teams and coaching staff are really dramatic contrast. Uh, whereas you look at uh, Pokey Allen and his football team, you said that they are very loose. Uh, they they kind of dreamed about being here. Youngstown State, they're buttoned down, straight collared guys. They expected to be here. I mean, they really play to their, uh, their coach's talent and their personality. Second and 11. Hildy setting up a screen. Adams in trouble. And thrown down for a loss back to the three-yard line. Paul Kahn, the junior from Mansfield, Ohio, made the play. This, a lot of the screen game for Boise State's just like a running part of their offense, really. I mean, they set it up. Hildy did a good job delaying, looking outside. Casey Adams, this is, as you look at study video of them, you'll see a lot of uh, the screen action. Loss of four on the play. After one quarter, the defending national champion, Jim Tressel of the Youngstown State Penguins, are trailing the Broncos 7-0. Our coverage continues after this message and a word from your local station. Penguins everywhere here in Huntington, West Virginia. And the YSU Penguins trailing the BSU Broncos after quarter, 7 to nothing. It's the Division I AA Football National Championship game. Sean McDonough with Steve Davis and Dave Logan. Boise State looking at third and 15 from its own four-yard line. Nothing fancy. Adams trying to get some breathing room for the punter. Andre Jethro and Reggie Lee combined on the stop at the seven-yard line. So once again, Danny Weeks will be standing in his end zone as he goes to punt. Weeks, senior, playing for his hometown school. He's from Boise, Idaho, out of Capitol High School. Second team all Big Sky Conference punter this year. Better than 41 per punt. Trent Boykin fields it at the 49 of BSU. 
And is driven back at the 43. Tackled by Chris Wing. Coaches say Wing goes 500 miles at all times. Ordinarily on special team. Sometimes 500 miles in the wrong direction. But not that time. Back after this. Jim Trestle said yesterday Boise State has the best defense his team will have faced this year. That was certainly evident in the first quarter. The Penguins held only 40 yards of total offense. And we mentioned that they have done the pass more frequently than they ordinarily do. They average under 20 passes per game through seven in the first quarter today. And most of those seven, they were going for big plays, trying to go deep. Excellent field position to begin this possession at the 43-yard line of Boise State. Option. Run guy takes. He got belted. But a quality gain on first down for YSU. Stephen Reed made the tackle at the 36. A gain of seven for Mark Rungard. They do a good job. They want to. What they want to do is they want to block. There's number 49. English is trying to block the uh, man for the quarterback, and then get him outside. Get Mark Rungard outside. Second and three. Close to a first down, he appears to have it. Brian Smith submarined him and knocked him down at the 32, but it looks from here to be a Youngstown State first down, and it is. With 13.29 left in the first half. Sean, when we talked to Tom Mason, the defensive coordinator of Boise State, what he was most concerned about is that off-tackle play. He said they run it 70 times in the last three ball games, and we've not seen it all that much in the first half. 27, 21, 31, 21. First and 10. This is more typical of Youngstown State, this possession. Back to the ground game. Pat got a couple. Down near the 30-yard line, Vince Watson picked him up, and the coaches told us on Thursday night, Watson's a big reason their defense is better this year. He sat out last year as a transfer from Portland State, Division II school. That's where Pokey Allen, his staff coach, before they came to BSU last year. Watson's a junior from Portland, Oregon. Tom Mason, the defensive coordinator, says he has NFL ability. John Patton, seven carries now for 19 yards. On uh, second and eight, they throw, front guard to the sideline, Patton, first down. Inside the 20, Vince Watson and Rasheed Gale combined to make the tackle for Boise State, a pickup of 11 for Patton. One of the reasons that Youngstown State may be a little bit out of character is because they feel like they can take advantage of this man coverage. Run guard does an excellent job of looking the defenders off doing a great job of staying in the pocket, making good movement. Watch his footwork. He stays home. He's moving, finds the open guy, and then delivers a good strike. Run guard now three out of eight passing for 34 yards. There's the one interception that led to the only touchdown in this game. Wakey State leads 7-0. And he gets powers through the middle. Down to the 13-yard line, Smith and Reed combined on the stop. Six yards on the game for England. Here's the trap play in, uh, inside. You saw the line, lineman uh, Miller pull, and then he goes right inside on the trap play. And they pull their guards a lot, do the Penguins. Vicchio and Miller get out there and run. Boyk is the motion man. On second and four. Back to the run. Patton. Stopped short of the first down by Chris Cook, the senior safety, whose interception and 58-yard return set up the touchdown. He's in his second year as a starter at Boise State at Strong Safety as a transfer from West Los Angeles Junior College. And he was a second-team All-Big Sky Conference selection this year. Eight rushes now, 21 yards for Sean Pat, who is at eight games of 100 yards plus rushing this season. Eight out of the 14 games. Young Pounds really played. He's gone over 100. Third and two. The Penguins over for four on third down. Austin Patton with a lot of run room. Sean Patton. It's 
Johnson short of the goal line. He shed the tackle of Keith Watt Green, but Watt Green slowed him down long enough for Rasheed Gale to get over there and prevent the touchdown. It is a gain of eight and first and goal. Now they're going to spot the ball back at the three-yard line. In the Big Sky Conference, you do not see a lot of wishbone. There's, I mean, it's a lot of options. Stephen Reed steps up, makes the hard hit on the quarterback. If that happens, then you've got to have secondary perimeter people reacting quickly. If you pick the ball quick, you've got to be there with the pitch man or they're going to have a big play. Much more typical of Youngstown State football. You can see on the replay that Patton did step out at the three. First and goal from the three-yard line. Boise State leads 7-0. Patton stood up by Jeremy Hayner. Backup middle linebacker wearing number 49. Sophomore from Boise. And an outstanding student at Boise State. A 3.66 grade point average in the spring semester this year as an education major. They they really do a good job. Boise State is a tough, physical inside. Jerry Hayner makes a good straight-up tackle to stop them. Now, down here, Youngstown likes the off-tackle power play and play-action passing series to get into the end zone. Ninth play of the drive. It started at the BSU 43-yard line. Youngstown State open for a time score. Front guard, option, front guard, loose. Brungard crossed the goal line, and now Paul Massaro, redshirt freshman place kicker, Niles, Ohio, will try to tie the game. 43 of 45 in PATs. Brungard is the holder. Yes. The option play is an excellent goal line play. Brungard comes down the line and just jumps inside. Nobody really forces him to pitch the ball. He does a great job of reading it. Watch him as he comes down the line. Nobody's there. No one's coming from outside in. Run guard goes in the end zone. 7-7 seven, seven game. Back in a moment. Penguins are flying high after their game-tying touchdown. A two-yard run by Mark Brungard, the quarterback, culminating the nine-play, 43-yard drive. It used up just more than four and a half minutes. So the Penguins will kick off with 9.43 left in the first half in a 7-7 game. Paul Massaro will kick it away. Willie Bowens waiting for it at his seven-yard line. The forecast of rain here today, but the sun is now shining brightly down on Marshall University Stadium. Finally, it was picked up by Chris Wing, and he carried it out to the 24-yard line. Wing had a tough time finding the handle originally, gathered it in, moved it 11 yards on the return before he was taken down by Mike McLeod. When we talk about Youngstown State on offense a little bit out of character, we really haven't fully seen the razzle-dazzle that we expected from Boise State. Really, and, and what they're not being able to do right now is run the ball at all. They felt like they had to be able to establish their running game to be successful today. Two tight ends in this formation. And Hildy after the play action pick, hit as he threw, and it falls incomplete. Paul Kahn and Jermaine Hopkins in close to Hildy. They put a lot of pressure on the quarterback. He's not taking long steps. He's not taking a deep drop at all, so he's got to throw on rhythm, throw on time. And uh, that time they were at Jermaine Hop Hopkins was able to put the pressure on him and wrap him up. And that couldn't have been too comfortable for Hildy, playing with a second-degree shoulder separation, his right shoulder. Aggravated that injury last week. And they went over Marshall and left the game for a while. Hildy, too high. Intended for Lee Schreck, who comes in in three wide receiver sets. 
Vance Mays had the coverage. And we mentioned the injury to Hildy. That's just one of several. He has an ankle problem. He's had a groin infection this week that has made him nauseous, a bruised bone in his right leg. And after 15 games, you might expect some bumps and bruises, but the Tony's more banged up than more. Very physical player, a linebacker style mentality. He was going to play regardless of what his physical condition was today. Here's be changing the play at the line. Third down and 10. The Broncos, their own 24. They haven't done much on offense until now. Lee Schrack, first down out at the 43 yard line. 19 yards to Schrack who had a pair of 34-yard touchdown receptions in the win last week over Marshall, including the game-winning catch midway through the fourth quarter. Good job. Youngstown State has two deep men playing the whole field, and this time Lee Schrack stretches the perimeter to the outside, forcing that safety to come over and make the play. Good read by Tony Hill. Schrack was a part-time starter at quarterback last year for BSU, moved to wide receiver in spring practice this year. He's a senior from Tempe, Arizona. Close to midfield, tripped up at the 48 by Reggie Brown. Gain of five, second and five, upcoming for Boise State. Seven to seven the score with nine minutes left in the first half. What Boise State really wanted to do against Youngstown State is come in and use a lot of misdirection, neutralize their speed and their quickness, create some indecisiveness with all their movements and all their uh, uh, different formations. The defensive coordinator for Youngstown State, Boise State has more formations than the law allows. And he couldn't get them all on their coaching board. And Hildy turned that into a game. He lunged ahead to the 50 in the arms of Paul Kahn. Al Borges is the offensive coordinator for Boise State. He estimates they have about 120 formations, and they script the first 10 plays and the first 10 passes and runs. And that's just a little bit of a sampling of what Al Borges has in front of him as he calls the play. 10 uh, running plays, 10 passing plays, all utilized to, to script the game in first and second down to give them a sense of confidence so they can work on it as they come into the ball game so they're real confident, confident having run it. Third down, Hildy has the first down. He carried inside the 45, gain of seven to the 43. And we talked about the injuries of Tony Hildy there. He picks up the first down on third down. Pokey Allen says he's the toughest human being in the world. This is really a design keep play. They have a little bit of option that they do run. Hildy's just a tough, like I said earlier, linebacker style, trying to make sure that they keep those outside linebackers honest. Gain of seven, the longest running play for Boise State this afternoon. And this is their most impressive possession on offense of the day. Hildy nearly got it intercepted, batted down by Leon Jones, the first team All-American and one of 48 finalists this year for the Butkus Award as the best linebacker in the country. He is one of only two finalists for that award who is not a Division I-A player. Three receivers to the top of the screen. They do a little bit of a, a, a different motion. One receiver pulls back. He's got to go over that linebacker. They're trying to take advantage of that, that middle uh, depth of those linebackers dropping into that short zone. Second and 10. 7-7 seven, seven the score. Midway through the second quarter. Adams. They call that the scoop option. Adams pitched it back. And Bowen was stopped at the 41 after a gain of two. They've used that play a couple of times this season. It appeared the Penguins were certainly ready for it. The San Diego Chargers run, ran this play uh, back in the mid-80s. It goes to Casey Adams. Now he becomes just like an option quarterback. It looks like they've got a good play. They don't get the block outside on Randy Smith, and that's why the play breaks down. If they make the play on Randy Smith blocking, you've got a runner going down the sideline. Officially a gain of one. So it's third and nine at the 42 of Youngstown State. Hildy running out of time. Hit a deep through interception. Leon Jones picked up by Lee Schrack at the 44-yard line. It was Jermaine Hopkins who hit Hildy as he threw it, and Jones had the easy interception. The problem 
problem is you're asking Tony Hildy to throw across his body with a shoulder separation. He can't put enough power on the ball. The ball floats on him, and that's why Leon Jones, great guy that's able to drop back in the area, great speed, there's no chance. Tony Hildy's got to really be careful about getting himself collected when he throws because he does not have the arm strength because of his injury. First interception of the year for Jones. He was credited with an 11-yard return. And Dan Inglis, who had two carries all year entering today's game, has already carried three times today. And he powered that out across the midfield strike before he was tackled by Chris Cook. Turnovers have been a problem for Boise State in the playoffs. In winning their first three games of the 1AA playoff this year, they've turned it over 15 times. It's amazing you beat three quality teams turning it over that many times. Pokey Allen said they had the statistics of a 6-5 and five team, and the turnovers was the most, most glaring element. Turned it over 21 times in the regular season of 11 games, but now they have 16 turnovers in four 1AA playoff games. One reason they're running Dan English as much, the fullback, is because he's more of a power runner at 210. I mean, really pounding in there and making those those front four of Boise State stay at home. And so, so that's why you're going to see him carry the ball a little bit more. They're trying to test them, use the strength that have served them well over the season. They're measuring for a first down with 541 left in the half. Their statistician Mike Swanson held a note saying he made it by two inches and it was just about that. First down for Mark Brungard and the YSU Penguins. Mark, during his four-year run in the championship game for YSU, was the only quarterback to start the national championship game two years in a row. Ray Isaac was the signal caller in 1991 for Jim Treffel, Nick Cochran in 92, and Brungard last year and this year. First and ten, seven, seven to score. Front guard running out of time, and he is dropped. Joe O'Brien and Sione Fafita chased Brungard and O'Brien wrapped him up. Youngstown State has run the power play, this eye play a lot. Now they go to the play action pass, trying to take advantage. Mark Brungard does a good job of not throwing a bad pass, just taking it under and realizing if there's no play here, take the loss. Joe O'Brien transferred to Boise State from Santa Clara when that program dropped football. Penguins back in their own territory after the loss of five. Here comes the blitz, and that is grounding. No flag thrown, but there wasn't a receiver anywhere near that toss by Brungard. I agree with you, Sean. I don't think there is a receiver anywhere near. At, well, he, he's definitely dumping the ball there. Maybe no flag because the official was caught in the collision, but uh, that was a textbook case of grounding. And no flag thrown. Incomplete pass. Incomplete pass. He knew that, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> and the BSU fans are booing him with good reason. There wasn't a Penguin well, player within 25 yards of where that ball was. To the misfortune of Boise State, that would have been a loss of down. It had been fourth down. They've been punting the ball. Uh, that's, uh, that's one that got away. Still a tough task for... Youngstown State, the third down and 15. Four-man rush, front guy, Marjorie Shorter. Darnell Bracey, his first catch of the game and a first down inside the 30. They'll mark him down to the 28-yard line. Jason Payne, the nickelback, made the tackle on Bracey. Mark Brungard really is a good, cool decision maker. Has the poise to step in. They're bringing Bracey across the middle in the, again, again against that man coverage. And he has the presence to lay it right in to Darnell Bracey, number 13. And I would submit to you, Steve, that the lack of the flag is a very big play now because if they were backed up, chances are they, they might have gone to a more conservative play call yeah. rather than just throwing it up there on third down at about 30. Run guard. Juan Miller, his second interception of the playoffs. 
the young man who was born without a left hand. He says, I don't think of it as a handicap. I think of myself as having two arms. One's just a little shorter than the other. And he demonstrated not only can he catch the ball, but he can make a tough catch on a throw just off the turf. Youngstown State has taken several shots at him, trying to test him. Here's, here's how he passes the test. I mean, the ball is thrown. He has great presence to jump right inside the receiver. This and makes the interception. At the 22, the Broncos begin. In the 7-7 seven, seven game, he'll be pumping and now running. Nice move. And he's close to a first down. Out near the 33, Andre Jethro, the nose guard, was able to run him down. A nice move by Hildy in the open field to sidestep Reggie Lee. You gotta hold his side. We have just one right? You gotta hold his side. It is a first down for BSU. 3.47 on the clock now running. Remaining in the first half, the Broncos have all three of their timeouts remaining. the line of scrimmage. Reggie Brown came up from his strong safety position to make the play. Brown starting in the national championship game for the fourth straight year. He's a senior from Cleveland. Youngstown State, I think, had a great plan coming in. They realized that Boise State has 100 formations, so they've really reduced the package down to just their basic defense, not to confuse their players. I think that's smart coaching. Second and 10. Here comes Brown again, and he got Hildy from behind. Reggie Brown on the safety blitz. Drops Hildy back at the 28th, a loss of five. Hilda usually picks up the blitz very well. This time, it, he turned his back. Reggie Brown's coming from outside, makes a beeline right to the back of Tony Hilde. Great play. He has really, Hilde typically doesn't miss the blitz. That time, he did not see him coming and didn't turn loose the ball in time. No backs behind Hilde. On third down and 15, looking down to two minutes left in the half. Hilde with lots of time, now running up. And he is sacked. Philip Jean-Baptiste, the linebacker, took Hildy down, officially a loss of one. They'll mark it at the 27. And if you're Youngstown State, do you think about a timeout here? The Broncos can take some time off the clock and punt for me. Already four sacks for YSU. Mostly Stakes is use all the time it can in getting this punt off. They still have 13 seconds on the play clock. A minute 30 left in the half. And that was deflected by Jermaine Hopkins. And Danny Weeks still got plenty on the roll. And it's dead at the 36. 37-yard punt. YSU has blocked three punts this year. Weeks has not had one blocked. This one was nearly blocked back. Was in all likelihood deflected by Hopkins. 7-7 the score. Back in a moment. Jim Trestle and the Youngstown State Penguins have won seven straight Division I AA playoff games. And they're 14-1 in the last 15 playoff outings. They're in the postseason for the sixth straight year for the seventh time in the last eight years. And they're tied up with Boise State at 7 with a minute 18 remaining in the first half. On their own 36, two timeouts remaining for the Penguins. John Patton under the line. John Patton. Will they mark him out of bounds? Yes, they will. They stop the clock as Patton reached the 44, two yards short of the first down. Juan Miller made the stop. Sean Patton, this is his senior year. He played his freshman year. Then three years, he's away from the campus, getting his life together, and comes back and becomes a real player. He is a fast, speedy, smart back with the football and knows how to, and really has made a difference in their running attack in a big way. That was his longest run. An eight-yard gain. He's up to 38 yards. He was slated to be the backup 
running back behind Charles Purdue, a sophomore, but Purdue hurt his knee. Preseason drills and is out for the year. Nice catch. For a first down in the BSU territory, Trent Boykin at the 39. Jason Kane, the tackler, pickup of 17. Down to a minute one remaining. The clock has stopped as they move the chains, and YSU will go without a huddle. That play really illustrated Mark Brungard's arm strength. He really threw a rocket about 35 yards on the line to Trent Boykin. Two catches today for Boykin. Now 150 in his career. He's tied for second all-time at YSU with Rick Sheppis. Jim Ferranti is number one all-time with 186 receptions since playing in his last game, so he won't catch him. Must be a 36 catches coming out from this game. an inside outside blitz and then he just finds an open area i mean there is nobody in the middle that man coverage again everyone is outside he senses it goes right up the middle of the field and it's a track meet to the end zone run guard has scored both touchdowns now has seven rushing touchdowns for the season and pokey allen's broncos trail for the first time today, but they're accustomed to that position. We mentioned they trailed 17-0 and 24-7 last week against Marshall and came back to win. The longest run of the season for Brunner. The dead ball foul for unsportsmanlike conduct against the offense will be enforced on the kickoff. With 35 seconds left in the half, that could be a break for the Broncos. They might get some good field position with which to work and three timeouts remaining. Paul Massaro trying to make it 14 to 7 YSU and he does the Penguins lead by a touchdown with 35 seconds left in the first half he's looking outside I'm trying to decide whether or not it was a call play he just jumps right up field makes a great run to the end zone puts youngstown state out ahead 14 to 7 with only 35 seconds left we'll be back on our way back to huntington i'm andrea joyce in new york coming up at halftime we'll have scores and highlights plus a look at a team of student athletes that does everything you'd ever wanted to do except win football games the prairie view a m panthers but right now let's go back to the game Welcome back to Huntington, West Virginia. Sean McDonough with Steve Davis and Dave Logan. It's the Division I AA Football National Championship game. Youngstown State on the 38-yard run by the quarterback Brungard now leads 14 to 7. And their offense got on track in the second quarter. The first quarter, YSU three punts and Brungard threw an interception. Here in the second quarter, Youngstown State, Youngstown State has scored two touchdowns. And Brungard has been intercepted once. Because of the penalty, the Broncos should get good field position here. Bowen runs it all the way out to the 48-yard line. So 27 seconds left for Boise State after the 26-yard return. And they have three timeouts with which to work. Dwayne Thompson made the tackle for the Penguins on Bowens on the kickoff return. In this second quarter, Youngstown State has really gone to their style of play. I mean, to use their strength, their speed, come right out Boise State and make them stop them. They've been very effective doing what they've done well all season long. They have three receivers to the left. We were told they might have a tricky play off this formation. Took it to the 46, and they quickly get a timeout. Ryan Akibi, the sophomore from West Lynn, Oregon, leading receiver on the season for the Broncos. He had five catches last week against Marshall. That's a gain of five for Akibi. And Pokey Allen has used his first timeout. 
all week long the Boise State football team they've been told by their coach Pokey Allen let's let's play with our within our abilities and what our capabilities are offensively play within the the offense don't get bothered don't panic when something goes bad for us and I, I would promise you at halftime that's exactly what he's going to be expressing they've been behind before in fact they've been behind a lot yes. and they've come back and, and played very well in one football game 13 of them in fact the 13 wins a school record for Boise State Previous high market wins in a season 10, done seven times at BSU, most recently in 1990. And the 13 wins ties the Big Sky Conference record set by the University of Nevada in 1986 and again in 1990. Hildy is 7 of 12 for 55 yards. He's been intercepted once. Second and five, 17 seconds left in the half. Quick drop, throw, complete. Jared Housky had some running room as he was slanting toward the middle, but he couldn't catch it. Leon Jones and Vance Mays have the coverage. Part of the problem, this Youngstown State defense, they have great team speed. So their linebackers react very well. Well-thrown ball. Leon Jones almost put a hand on it. We should have had a catch by a TV number 80. Now they come with the three receivers to the right. Hildy missed him. Well, it's fourth and five with eight seconds left. If you're pokey, do you rear back and let one fly toward the end zone? Why not? Mm -hmm. That seems to be his style. <laughs> They're at the 47-yard line of Youngstown State. Al Borton, Pokey Allen, a long time back in the days together at Portland State. One time five members of the coaching staff here at a house in Portland. Hildy is letting it fly toward the end zone, and it is incomplete. And that is the end of the first half. With the score, Youngstown State 14 and Boise State 7. Andrea Joyce will be along from New York with halftime after this message and a word from your local station. CBS Sports presentation of the Division I AA Championship is sponsored by Contact Day and Night. Relieve your cold symptoms with the right medicine at the right time. 3DO, the most advanced home gaming system in the universe. And by Pringles, so fresh, once you pop, you can't, you can't, you can't stop. Here at halftime, Youngstown State leads the national championship game 14-7 over Boise State. Dave Logan is standing by with Bronco coach Pokey Allen. Dave? Okay, Sean. Coach Allen, you find yourself down by seven. Your thoughts in the first half? Yeah, we made way too many mistakes. We played great defense for a while and then gave them a couple big plays. Uh, we just got to quit making mistakes, come out and play our game. We'll be fine. Anything different in the second half, coach? Yeah, we made a few adjustments. Nothing big. Uh, take away that quarterback draw they had and a few other deals, but uh, we just got to play catch, throw the ball, and play catch. All right, Coach, have a good one. Sean? Thank you, Dave, and thank you, Coach. Here at halftime, Youngstown State leads the national championship game 14-7 to over Boise State. Dave Logan is standing by with Bronco coach Pokey Allen. Dave? Okay, Sean, Coach Allen, you find yourself down by seven. Your thoughts in the first half? Yeah, we made way too many mistakes. We played great defense for a while and then gave them a couple big plays. Uh, we just got to quit making mistakes, come out and play our game. We'll be fine. Anything different in the second half, Coach? Yeah, we made a few adjustments, nothing big. Uh, take away that quarterback draw they had and a few other deals. But uh, we just got to play catch, throw the ball, and play catch. All right, Coach, have a good one. Sean? Thank you, Dave, and thank you, Coach Allen. Steve, would you uh, concur with Coach Allen's analysis of the first half? Absolutely. I, I, the running game was ineffective. They felt like they had to have a running game to be really effective. I think they've just got to go throw the ball. They're not going to have a lot of success uh, running the ball at all. I think also that the, the middle depth that Youngstown drops back, they're so fast and good speed there that uh, I think they need to take the ball deep a little bit more. So they've got the talent and skill, and they're not that far into the ball game and, and that far behind. Let's take a look at some statistics from the first half of today's game. Rushing by quarter, only seven attempts for Youngstown, uncharacteristically. 17 yards in the first quarter, but 
they got back to YSU football in the second quarter. Well, what's important here is the fact that in the second quarter, they really got into what they has, has gotten them here over the season and, and to be able to run the ball. And as a result, uh, with the yardage gain on the ground in the second quarter, YSU a decided advantage in total offense at better than two to one. And they've also been after Tony Hildy four sacks for the Penguins. They're going to have to do a better job protecting uh, Tony Hildy. Total rushing yardage next on our list of halftime stats. You mentioned Boise half. State's struggle to rush the Did football only 24 20 yards, while YSU is up to 100. And Boise State will kick off to begin the second half. With the sun now shining brightly after a rainy day yesterday and a cloudy morning this morning with the forecast a decent possibility of rain. No clouds to be seen now. Erickson kicks off. And it's returned to the 30-yard line by Trent Boykin. Tackled by Nathan Gillum. So here comes Brungard, who scored both touchdowns for YSU in the first half. Both of them rushing touchdowns. The first, a two-yard run of the option. And the second, 38 yards, right up the middle, untouched. The play to which Coach Allen was referring with Dave Logan. There is an injured Penguin on the kickoff return. That's Randy Smith, the man who returned the kickoff. Randy, a senior from Buffalo, New York was a running back when he arrived at YSU and now in his fourth year as the starting defensive back in the national championship game started in 91 in Statesboro Georgia as a true freshman and he was a second team AP All-American this year as a kick returner and is limping off the field aided by the training staff and reason for Jim Trust to be concerned because Smith is a key member of his secondary. So the Penguins will begin the second half from their own 30-yard line, leading 14 to 7. And Lungard opens the half with two tight ends. And the I formation, Inglis and Patton behind the junior quarterback. Option play. One guy decided to keep it and gained four to the 34-yard line. Travis Thompson made the tackle number 99 for Boise State. Mostly up the middle on the ground for Coach Tressel. And last week, Marshall did the very same thing, had a great deal of success early in the ball game, running right at them and because they just took advantage of their strength and their offensive line against this uh, Boise State. And that's exactly what Youngstown is trying to do. On second down, Sean Patton lost the football and got it back. It bounced right back up to him. And the ball spotted down at the 34 for no gain. Chris Cook made the tackle. Just the isolation play right inside. Sean does a great job. It has all season long of being able to make a great cutback one way or the other and look for the hole. And he's, he's been able to really perfect that skill over the course of the season. Third down and six. We played a minute and a half in the third quarter. Youngstown State with a 14 to 7 lead. Run guard throws on the run, too high. And a late hit by Keith Walk Green on the intended receiver, Trent Boykin, but no flag thrown. The pass was well overthrown, and Youngstown State will be forced to punt, and they're still working on Randy Smith on the Penguin bench. 
One explana explanation why Youngstown's throwing the ball so much early in the ball early in the ball game and now here in the third quarter is just to be able to open up their running attack. Get those guys backpedaling a little bit. Short punt by Dreslinski. And it rolls dead at the 29-yard line. Down by Leon Jones, a 37-yard punt. And Tony Hildy leads the Bronco offense onto the field. This is a familiar scenario for Boise State and its fan. They're accustomed to being behind at the half. Last week, it was a huge second half to beat Marshall. Marshall did not score the second half last week after rolling up 254 yards in total offense and three playoff games today, 35 to seven in favor of Boise State in the second half. Casey Adams on the seam, quality gain on first down. He's out to the 36, gain of seven. Tackle made by Vince Mays. Adams, in his first year playing at Boise State, he was in the program last year as a transfer from Laney Junior College, but sat out last fall due to academic ineligibility. He was the Big Sky Newcomer of the Year this season. And he rushed for over 1,200 yards in the regular season. Second and three, Hildy. Decides to run, good decision with everyone covered, and he has the first down out to the 44. Leon Jones is stopped. Eight yards on the key for Hildy. There is one adjustment right there for Boise State. First half, he didn't get the sense that Hildy was moving around. He was staying pretty much in the pocket. Short throws, uh, short motion, not too much of depth. Here they're moving him around, getting him outside of the pocket, getting him a little bit of movement, put more pressure on that Youngstown State defense. Don't give them a chance just to tee off on him and find him in the pocket all the time. Move him around. First and ten. And the pass is incomplete. Intended for Jared Housky. Housky somewhat of a prophet. Back in the spring, the strength coach at Boise State asked him to write a letter to the football team to send with their off-season conditioning program. And Jarrett wrote, if you believe in yourself and you believe in the team, we are going to be the Big Sky and national champions next year. Now, an observer from a distance might have chuckled given that they were 3-8 and eight last year, but uh, the Big Sky part of it's right, and they can take care of the national championship part with a win today. Second and ten. Again, play action. They throw it out wide to Akibi. And he's bottled up after his short game. Ryan got it to the 47, and that's it. Three yards before he was taken down by Leon Jones, who continues to be in on just about every tackle. You'll see Boise State so often with three receivers to one side of the field, and then it's literally like a fast break action. And then he may go deep to a receiver going downfield, or maybe a, deep, uh, a receiver taking kind of an inside screen type action. But Hildy is excellent being able to find the open man, making the read on the coverage. Report from the Youngstown State bench, Randy Smith has a sprained right ankle. His return is probable, but he is not on the field at the moment. They come on the blitz from the corner, and Hildy is hit as he throw it. Vance Mays hit him as he threw. It's ruled incomplete. The arm was coming forward, and the Broncos will punt. And Jim Kessel plays the part of referee. Vance Mays comes from the outside. The first half, Tony Hildy had four sacks. They've got to do a better job. They keep a tight end, but no one picks him up. Backsides protecting him from Vance Mays, who takes literally just a direct shot to the back of Tony Hildy. Ordinarily, Randy Smith goes back to receive the punch with Smith Boykin. Now it's Whistler and Boykin, and Smith's still on the bench. Fair catch called for. They let it bounce, and the Broncos down it inside the two-yard line. Chris Wing, a standout on special teams, made the play. A 53-yard punt. Great work by the Broncos punting unit. Kicking game is so important in this football game. You've got to be in position to make the play. Ten Youngstown State deep. Make them go a long way. It's 14-7. We'll be back.
Among those in attendance here in Huntington, West Virginia today, Todd Donnan, the outstanding senior quarterback for the Marshall Thundering Herd. His team lost in Boise to the Broncos last weekend. And Todd's dad, Jim, the coach here at Marshall. Yeah, one of the tough assignments that Todd had to take was to clean out his locker and let Boise State come into their locker room. So they expected to be in this ball game, but uh, Boise State uh, thwarted that effort, and they're here uh, in the national championship game. And the folks here in the tri-state area deserve a lot of credit for the way they have supported this game and have attended it today without Marshall in the game. Youngstown State pinned in deep, and it's Travis Thompson with the hit. Ball moved out near the three-yard line, and that's it. Lee Moon is the athletic director here at Marshall University and president of the Huntington Sports Committee. And Lee and his staff here at Marshall and the folks with whom he serves on the Huntington Sports Committee combined to do a fabulous job in hosting the 1AA championship game. He'll be next year as well. Patton through a hole, close to a first down. He has it out to the 14 before Chris Cook made the stop. A pickup of 10 for Sean Patton. Sean Patton has shown this kind of ability all season long. He's got great quickness and power. He's 8 of 14 games in the season. He's rushed for more than 100 yards. He really has been the guy that sets the tempo of this offense because they manage a game by being able to run the football, and Sean Patton over 1,500 yards with today's output. And for his career, over 2,000 yards and only 29 career games. He's been in the program two years. Everybody else at YSU who's rushed for over 2,000 yards in a career needed four years in the program to do it. Vince Watson made the tackle that time after a gain out to the 15, a pickup of one. And Patton's up to 49 yards rushing. He had 142 last week in the win over Montana at Stambaugh Stadium in Youngstown, especially known to their fans as the Ice Castle. And it was chilly and rainy there last week when they entertained Montana. 9.15 remaining in the third quarter. Brungard asked for a timeout. Play clock was at one. Second and nine upcoming for the Penguins. Timeout. Well, two timeouts remaining for the defending national champion. 60 wins in the decade of the 90s for Youngstown State. In the 90s, they are 60 wins, nine losses, and two ties. More wins than any program at any level of college football in the 90s. They've been in double figures in every year in wins in the 90s. And Jim Tressel's name comes up every year for vacant 1A coaching jobs. And he says, uh, I enjoy my situation here in Youngstown. My family enjoys it, and I'm not in any rush to leave. Well, and he's done an outstanding job at Youngstown State. You know, as we, we look at this as a Division I player, Sean, I, I'm really impressed with the tournament structure and the way these players have an opportunity to decide a national championship on the field. It is a grueling gauntlet of competition. I mean, they have got, they start playing the best that's in the country, 16 teams, get thrown into this bracketing, one plays four, it's divided by four regions of the country, and every week gets better and better, and the competition from that first week is just incredible. And as both coaches said, this is the way a national championship should be decided, not the way they do it in 1A football with these poles and when it's not decided on the field. Here, you win the national championship on the field, and that's as it should be, and they talk about this format prolongs the season. These players are done with football here today, while every Division I-A bowl game but one is still to be played. That's Those right. students are still involved in football. That's right. On second and nine, after the timeout, the option. Brungard made some fine decisions today, carrying the ball. He took that one to the 22, still about two yards short of the first down. Sione Fafita made the tackle. Gain of seven for Brungard. He's up to 53 yards rushing on seven carries. He's the leading ball carrier in the game. Excellent execution by Mark Brungard on the option play. Boise State doesn't see a lot of option football. He came down the line. They slow played him, trying to create, make him pitch the ball prematurely. No one took him. He jumped upfield, made the yardage. 
Third in the long two. Eight and a half minutes remaining in the third quarter. Youngstown State leads 14 to seven. That was the score at halftime. Option, from down, first down. He's out to the 31 yard line. Tackled by Brian Smith and Keith Walt Green. That's nine more on the ground for Brungard. Nobody's taking the quarterback. Mark just jumps upfield. It's a speed option down the line. No one is there. Everyone's outside. The quarterback's rule, someone's got to take you. It's generally the three man. The first man's got deep outside responsibility to pass. Second man's got pitch. Third man's quarterback. Nobody comes for Mark. He just jumps upfield. This is not typical for Brungard in 14 games this season entering today's action. He had only rushed for 107 yards all year. That was one yard for Carroll. On first down, they drive it out to the 34. Brian Smith made the tackle. A gain of three. In the second quarter, Boise State, uh, Youngstown State has a lot of success running Sean Patton in the running game, running their power offense. The adjustment it appears that's been made is let's let's stop Sean Patton, but all of a sudden Mark Brungard is having success running the ball. And Youngstown State is doing what it does best. They run the ball up the field and shoot up large chunks of the clock. They give it to Patton. Patton trying to bounce it outside and now back inside. He was met by Travis Thompson and Brian Smith near the 38-yard line. They'll need about four, or certainly a long three, on third down to move the chain. I'm going to tell you something, Sean. Both these teams will hit you. They are physical. They have great speed on both sides of the ball, and they swarm. I mean, this uh, Boise State defense, I mean, it's personified by, by guys like... Uh, Joe O'Brien and others, and these guys that just, I mean, they swarm the football and put a hit on you. Third down, a very long two. And Brungard is able to sidestep it. And now throw deep, and it's incomplete. Don Swistler, ordinarily sure-handed, should have had it. And Dwan Miller had the coverage, and he was barking at the official. Apparently, he thought Swistler pushed off. The quarterback gets excellent pressure this time. The quarterback gets excellent pressure this time from outside. Unfortunately, they take the wrong. Stephon Reed, 47, takes the wrong angle of attack. That was Brian Smith also putting a little contact on the quarterback. Yes, let's see the punt. And the fair catch made by Adams. 37 yards on the punt. The Broncos on offense in a moment. Play will be first and Boise State. At the Youngstown State quarterback Mark Brungard, the star of the game to this point, he has scored both touchdowns for YSU and they lead by seven. Meanwhile, Tony Hildy, the Boise State quarterback, has been under pressure throughout, sacked four times, hurried on six other occasions. He started the game five for six passing, but since then he's three out of 12 with an interception. And watch him in the second half. They're going to move him around, get him out of the pocket where they can't take a beeline to his back. Randy Smith is back in the game at quarterback for Youngstown State. And the pass is caught. Ryan Akibi out to midfield. That looked like it might be picked off near the near sideline. Lester Weaver was the man lining up the ball, and it sailed over his head to a KB in a big play. In this coverage, they always have the op option, Tony Hildy, to go backside when he's got single coverage out there. He threw it perfectly over Reggie Brown, number seven, who's got a KB and making the coverage there, but Reggie was out of position, and Ryan Akibi makes a big play. Al Borg is the offensive coordinator, says that he is probably the most talented player on their offense. He has Division I A ability. Pump fake and long throw, and it is intercepted. Randy Smith, who turned his ankle on the opening kickoff of the half, just back in for this series, and he ran under the throw from Hildy for the pickoff. Smith with the interception. Two turnovers for each team now. Both quarterbacks have thrown two interceptions. Well, the one, 
obviously the interception's a bad play for them, but what's key here is they're taking it deep. Youngstown's too strong inside. They're too tough in those middle zones. Randy Smith does a great job. Again, illustrating Tony Hilde getting pressure all the time. He's always getting pe there's people around him every play, and he's often having to throw in a hurry or off balance. The turnovers continue to plague Boise State in the playoffs. Hildy only threw nine interceptions in the regular season. He's thrown nine now in four playoff games. Youngstown State keeps it on the ground with Patton. And he's tackled by Vince Watson. Hildy now nine out of 20 after starting the game five for And there is an injured Penguin, Dan Inglis, the fullback. And they're running short for players in the backfield of the Penguins. Inglis is the backup ordinarily, but Mac Gilchrist is not even in uniform today with an ankle injury. Starting fullback was hurt last week against Montana. Corey Scarlato out with knee surgery. Nakia Hendricks, another running back in the program, will not play today due to a knee injury suffered last week. Youngstown State leads by a touchdown back to Huntington after this. That's all they do. All right. They drive opportunity. That's it. All right. Sean McDonough with Steve Davis and Dave Logan. Our producer, Lance Barrow, our director, Kathy Barreto. Happy to have you with us from all of us at CBS Sports. Happy holidays. The Youngstown State Penguins leading 14 to 7. Dan Inglis was the injured player. He walked off the field under his own power and appeared to be fine. On second down. Short gain on the handoff to Nathan Toy. Came in for Inglis. He's a true freshman, wearing number 23 out of North Lima, Ohio. Sioni Fasita made the tackle at the 14, setting up third down and six. Five 12 remaining in the third quarter. The clock is running. Run guard has Patton open, finds it. Run to the catch, good for the first down. Out to the 22. He was wide open. Rashid Gale knocked down Sean Patton, but it's a game of nine, and the Penguins move the chain. One of the luxuries of having a running football team is the ability to have play action passes. There was a perfect illustration of being able to make the fake play action pass. Looks like a rollout. And then just lay it off to Sean Patton. I thought he'd made a fake. It really wasn't play action. It's a rollout action. Finding Sean in the open area in the shallow zone. Option to the near side. One guy kicks. What a game he is having rushing the football. He's close to another first down at the 32. Brian Smith and Pete Walk Green. They the tackle, 74 yards now for Brungard after the nine-yard game. That's on 10 carries, and as we mentioned, he had just over 100 during the regular season. Watch the quarterback come down the line of scrimmage right here. He's got to make the play on the on the uh, quarterback, but watch him. He slow plays and jumps up field. Watch Mark come down the line of scrimmage. He doesn't take him. He jumps up field inside. Great execution on the option play. Now Nathan Toy, he dislocated his thumb last week, flag thrown in the area you'd expect holding. Nathan spent the week in a cast with his dislocated thumb, took the cast off to play today, and he's in for the injured Dan Inglis. It is a holding call against the Penguins. That's the first holding penalty called in this game. And as you'd expect from two teams of this caliber, it has been a Relatively penalty-free football game. I'm really impressed with Mark Brungard and his ability to run the option play. I mean, holding offense, 10-yard penalty, still second down. Of course, Boise State doesn't see a lot of it. They're not accustomed to seeing a running quarterback out of the Big Sky Conference, but Mark has run it perfectly. I think they're doing a great job defending it, but again, Mark's doing a wonderful job making the right calls, jumping up fields, and making them take him. Marshall University Stadium, recently remodeled, beautiful 1AA football facility. All 
spot it back at the 22 yard line. And right up in this wrestler. He does not have blazing speed. Here comes Juan Miller. We mentioned his 4 5 speed. And he was able to catch him and knock him out at the 10 yard line. 69 yards, longest play of the season for his whistler. Watch Zisler, great action. It's a play action, like it's an option play. He goes right by DeWan Miller, number 16, and then it's just a track meet. Wonderful execution. That was a very problem that Tom Mason, the defensive coordinator of Boise State, was most concerned about, the play action game, their ability to make a big play off of their run action. That's the 100th catch of his career for Don Twistler. With an exclamation point. Mm, indeed. He came to YSU as a quarterback. His dad, Don, was an outstanding quarterback at Youngstown State's arch rival after. From just inside the 10, they pitch it to Pat. Pat trying to turn the corner. And Keith Walk Green came up from the secondary to make the play. At the five yard line, Juan Miller also stuck his nose in to bring down Patton. Okay, this time, watch the quarterback come down the line of scrimmage. This time, he's going to pitch the ball, but if you're going to, but you got to react quickly. Watch what happens as you come down the line of scrimmage. Watson will take him now, but you've got to get upfield quick or you're going to make a big play. That's the problem. When you make the quarterback pitch, you've got to be at, your defense has got to roll into it quickly or you've got a problem. Second and goal from just inside the five. 14 to 7, Youngstown State of the Penguins are on the move. Run guard tripped up as he threw it and it was nearly intercepted. Ryan Smith nearly picked it off. Stephon Reed came from his linebacker spot and forced Brungard to throw it up in the air. Mark doesn't make mistakes. The quarterback, Mark Brungard, number 12, he's had one in this ball game, but here they got him rolling out. That's an ill, that's a bad throw to make and try to force it like that. The man wasn't open. You're not squared away to throw the ball properly. Take the hit, go down. Because if Smith doesn't stumble and can stay in the feet and catch it, that might be 100 yards the other way. And a great emotional swing. Now third and goal from the five. 307 remaining third quarter. 14 to 7, Youngstown State. Run guard to the end zone. Touchdown! Don Swessler beats Juan Miller on the coverage. And the Penguins take a 20 to 7 lead. Touchdown pass, Brungard to Zwistler. Ninth TD reception of the year for Zwistler. Now Brungard holds for Massaro, who has the extra point. And with 3.02 remaining in the third quarter, it's 21 to 7. Here's what you're going to see. You're going to see Zwistler is going to go out, and then you're going to have one inside. You're going to have a crossing motion. Let's see what happens. Good execution by Mark. Crossing motion, you got one man coming inside. This was going outside, and there it is. There's this, this was Zisler goes outside. There's the inside route, and he's going to throw to the open man. Boy, a great throw by Mark Brungard. Brungard does a great job of throwing the ball. This is a wonderful touch route. I mean, it's got to be perfectly laid in there, and he throws it right over the outstretched arm of Dewan Miller. Touchdown, big play. And the big play on the drive, the 68-yard pass officially to Zwistler that got them down to the 10-yard line. That was a 91-yard drive. They started at their own nine. Took only eight plays and 2.53 off the clock. Capped on the five-yard touchdown pass. Brungard to Zwistler. So Brungard has scored two. And has thrown for one. And Pokey Allen's team is in trouble with 3.02 left in the third quarter. And a new uh, kickoff man now, John Dorma, scrubs it down the field. And hit Chris Wing on the foot. And it was 
returned out across the 35-yard line by Dell Graven, an 18-yard return officially. Well, if they're a team of destiny, as the Broncos think they are, uh, this would be the way to wrap up the season with a big comeback, but it's uh, tougher to do against this young town. Well, and it's tougher to do when you've not had any success running the football, because now Youngstown State can really play the pass game and play it very intelligently, and that's the problem. They've just not been able to establish anything in the run. And three receivers out to the left. Boise State for the game, just 38 yards rushing. One guard himself is doing a couple back. Feldy wrapped up and sacked. Fifth sack for the Penguins, Andre Jethro, the first man there. Back at the 34-yard line, the loss of four. There's the total offense. Youngtown State in this quarter, 142 yards just as have taken control. Boise State's just not been able to get untracked and move the ball down the field consistently. Second and 14. Down to 215 remaining in the third quarter. Quick. This time picked up off the corner. He'll be with time. Connects to Jared Hoski for a first down in the Penguin territory at the 45. That's a gain of 21 for the senior from Marysville, Washington, who came to Boise State as a walk-on. You see Reggie Brown coming outside on the blitz play. This time, Hildy picks it up. He's got one-on-one -on -one coverage there to Jared Hopsky and throws a perfect strike in there. In previous times, that same route was there, but the problem was the great rush of Reggie Brown on the blitz. Jared an international business major, wants to be a stockbroker. He's going to go to the all in the big sky with a 3.31 overall GPA. Adams down to the 39. A rare quality gain on the ground today for the Broncos. Paul Kahn made the stop, a gain of six. That front group of y Youngstown State, Hopkins, Jethro, and Khan are doing an excellent job really putting pressure and allowing them to drop a lot of people off. That three-man pressure is doing a job on Hildy. They empty the backfield. Hildy, what about draw? And he's close, but short of the first down by about a yard at the 36. Jethro and Lee combined on the stop. When you're dominating that line and you can put three men in the rush, actually they just got two really that time, then you can drop all your other people and so that those short zones, any kind of draw play, you're going to be able to snuff out. And that's the problem that that man, Pokey Allen's having to face right now. Big play here. Third down of the yard at the Youngstown State 36. Youngstown State leads by 14 points. In the final minute of the third quarter. Goes Adams, and I don't think he got it. Needed to get to the 35-yard line. Lee met him at the top of the pile, and they are short, and it's fourth down. And if Pokey Allen wants, he can wait until the quarter ends to figure out a play. They don't have to snap it before the quarter expires. Boy, that is a telling key of this ball game: the inability to go get yards on the ground when you have to get them and they weren't able to get a one yard gain. See the time remaining in the quarter and Youngstown State had some problems with people running on and off the field and they called the timeout with one second left in the quarter. They probably didn't have to use it because it looked like the quarter would expire with ease before Boise State snapped the ball. The Penguins now with only one timeout left. Boise State with fourth down and one. What do you expect as they have a little extra time to talk about? It? They've got to get something that is able to give them a chance to uh, have some success and give them keep the ball. They cannot afford to turn it over and give the ball up right now. Anything in terms of a, a, play, a little bit of a play action here, even get Tony Hildy on a roll would be an appropriate play. I don't think they're going to have a lot of success against that strength that Youngstown State in the middle. Coming up when this game is over here on CBS Sports, you'll get a look at the candidates for the men's, women's, and scholastic basketball players of the year on the RCA Player of the Year preview, hosted by Billy Packer and Andrea Joyce. That's next on CBS Sports. One second left in the third quarter here. Jim Tressel, we mentioned his dad, Lee, the late Dr. Lee Tressel, great coach for many years at Baldwin Wallace. 
in the Cleveland area, won a national championship. They are the only father and son combination to have each coached the national championship team in college football. And Jim's brother Dick is an outstanding coach at Hamlin in Minnesota. Big play here. Fourth down in a yard. Final play of the third quarter. Hildy looking to throw. Hildy incomplete. effort probably the right call trying to get something happen to tied in it was there prematurely it was there early but Hildy just never got collected never got set up and they didn't fool Youngstown State with the call the end of the third quarter Youngstown State leads by 14 our coverage will continue after this message and a word from your local station CBS Sports presentation of the Division I AA Championship has been sponsored by MasterCard. It's more than a credit card, it's smart money. Radio Shack, you've got questions, we've got answers. And by Advil, advanced medicine for pain. No non-prescription pain reliever is proven to last longer than Advil. David Logan back with you in Huntington in the start of the fourth quarter where Boise trails by 21. And joining me is Cedric Dempsey, the director, executive director of the NC2A. Cedric, this is your first championship game, your impression so far on this one. Well, I think, Dave, this is really epitomizes what NCAA is all about, and that is offering opportunities for well over 100 student-athletes here and a great learning and growing experience. Uh, but what is important, I think, for people to recognize, these events just don't happen. Uh, I want to congratulate the Huntington Sports Committee for a tremendous job, a volunteer group here in, in the city of Huntington, as well as Marshall University for their contribution. And then we have a championships committee that's composed of membership uh, on a volunteer basis that this year is uh, chaired by Mr. Chuck Boone, uh, athletic director at Richmond University. And it takes all of that to make this happen, but uh, when you look around today, you got to say it's a, it's a great experience. Cedric, how close are we to seeing playoffs in Division I? It's working over here, but when will we see it in the other division? Well, uh, that's been reviewed uh, over the last 15 years in Division 1A. Uh, at this point in time, the membership is not ready to move forward with it. A lot of people feel it's inevitable, but uh, I don't see it in the immediate future. Okay, thank you, Mr. Dempsey. Sean, back to you. Thank you, Dave. Fourth quarter about to begin. They hope to bring another national championship trophy back to the Ice Castle in Youngstown. Do the Penguins? And Pokey Allen's charges at 15 minutes left pull off one last comeback in this magical 94 season. Patton stacked up. Stefan Reed into the play. Juan Miller came up and rather Joe O'Brien appeared to throw a punch at somebody. That's why you hear the YSU fans hollering. There is no flag. Brian Smith officially credited with the tackle with help from Reed. After a gain out to the 37-yard line. Watch for 14. Joe O'Brien as the play ends. Swinging around Dan Inglis. And it continues beyond what you saw as well. Second down and eight. Option. And once again, Boise State can't stop it, but the flag is thrown in the backfield. Rungard got out near the 50-yard line before Smith and Gale took him down. But a holding call is the preliminary indication against the Penguins. Why the option play worked so well earlier is because when Boise State's in a man coverage, oftentimes they're just running away from the player that got the ball because they're trying to protect the receiver and they react slowly that time they were in a cover three situation and they reacted a little bit better in the option play but they're giving way too much time in terms of being able to make a decision run up field nobody's taking the quarterback offense 10 yard penalty still second down well, it's not as if the Boise State coaches did not expect to see some option from Youngstown. They knew that they would, but I think they're seeing far more of it than they expected, probably in large part because why are you sticking with it? Because they've had success with it. And the other part of it, this is a passing football team. Can you imagine the difficulty in practice of trying to give your defense a smart look of option football? 
Second down after the holding penalty. 23 yards to go for Penguin first down. 13-40 remaining. 21 to 7, Youngstown State. They set up a screen. It appeared the Broncos knew that was coming. Passing some nifty running to turn it into a short gain. Out to the 25. Matt Weston made the tackle. A gain of two. Third and 21 for Youngstown State. This is one of the few times they've been able to bottle up Sean Patton after he's made a catch. This time it's just a, it was a short, quick screen, but then he's trying to go inside, and boy, he does a great job of really pinching down on him and not giving him a lot of yardage. Five for 11 on third down. Are the Penguins, this one is third and long, and keep it on the ground with Patton. And they'll punt with 12.48 in the clock running, remaining in the fourth quarter. I think what you're seeing, Sean, is that Youngstown State's taking the attitude, okay, we're not going to make any, any glaring mistakes on offense. We're going to control the ball. If we have to punt, our defense is going to go stop you. Tim Dreslinski, the punter. Flags thrown as he punts. Flags down on each side of the field. Fair catch made by Adams. If the punt stands, it's 38 yards officially. And the preliminary indication is a penalty against Boise State for offsides. from the sideline is that Jim Tressel wants this penalty declined. Offside defense. The penalty is declined. First down. Timeout. And that's the right decision. Coach Allen has some dangerous return men. Why give them another chance? Back in a moment. Well, 26 remaining in the fourth quarter of the Division I AA National Championship game here in Huntington, West Virginia. Boise State with the football at its own 35, first and 10. Hildy. Incomplete. Intended for Kibi. It was a half stride ahead of him. And thrown into traffic where Kibi might have known that a big hit awaited him. Could he have taken that one in? Second and ten. Quarterback draw. Hildy for two, and that's it. Andre Jethro made the play. Again, the blitz from outside. Reggie Brown, uh, excuse me, that was uh, Vance Mays, number four, comes from outside. Quarterback draw. Hildy is a linebacker, has a linebacker-style personality, physically tough. It's just unfortunate because he, he really isn't up to full 100% speed. Shoulders banged up, his ankle is sore. He's just not as physically top shape as he has been in earlier games in the season. They're down to two on the play clock, and they don't get it off. The wheel to call a timeout, but the flag was thrown. And it looked from here that he waited too long to signal for the timeout. Dead ball foul, delay of game, the request came too late. So now they'll have all three timeouts, but Al Borges, the offensive coordinator, and head coach Pokey Allen can't be pleased about the development that continues to be rim for Boise State. Well, the clock is down in the far right corner, and he's looking pretty much right at it, but at that time, he was trying to read the coverage at the same time monitoring the time. There it is in the right corner. So you think they would decide not to use the timeout here. They're going to need those later. And apparently, a timeout has been granted, and we'll take it as well. Back in a moment.
David Logan on the Youngstown sideline. Very interesting play before this timeout. Apparently, Tony Hilde tried to reach, tried to get the signal up to call timeout. Now, one of the officials did not see it, and that was the problem. So they went ahead and penalized him anyway. So you've got some confusion right now on the field, but that one is definitely on the officials. John. Well, he did not appear to signal timeout quickly enough. I would agree with the officials that time expired. But now they've charged Boise State with a timeout as well. So they were penalized and got the double whammy of burning a timeout that they otherwise would not have wanted to use. And I've never seen that before, the Steve. The flag stop play. That's the right. flag stop play. So I'm they confused on the rule. with the timeout. That's and that's right. why Coach Allen has a reason to with the officials. Now it's third down and 13. Over the middle, it's caught but short of a first down by about a yard, maybe two, and a decision for Coach Allen with 11.25 left. Reggie Lee made the tackle on Housky, and with this much time left, they'll punt. Now, we should point out that the scoreboard still has three timeouts left for Boise State, but clearly Joseph Arnone, the referee, indicated timeout Boise State before we went away for the commercial break, and that's why the argument ensued along the sideline. Our understanding is they have two timeouts, and Dave Logan will endeavor to make sure that is the case. Weeks. Hunting toward the sideline. Here it gets made by Boykin at the 21-yard line. 36-yard punt. 10.51 remaining. Youngstown State inching closer to its third national championship. Tomorrow at 3 Eastern Time, CBS Ion Sports presents the VIX 44 North American Open Skating Championships. See your Olympic favorites, including Brian Boitano, tomorrow at 3 Eastern on Ion Sports. Eye on the clock if you're Boise State and Youngstown State. 10.51 remaining. Youngstown State with the ball and a 14-point lead. And that is certainly an appropriate mood on the Broncos' sideline. We have learned, by the way, from the press box that the officials have decided now, after that animated discussion with Coach Allen, that they would not charge Boise State with the much-debated timeout. That might be what they're talking about again. But we have just been told that they did not charge a timeout. The coaches convinced the officials that they were correct. The coaches were correct. Three timeouts remaining for Boise State. But Al Borges is shaking his head wondering what all this conversation is about. Finally, they're ready to go. From their own 21, Youngstown State has one timeout left. Had to burn a couple here in the second half. 33. He whispered option, and he was right. You knew it was coming, but it still doesn't seem that the Broncos can contend with it. And it was Brian Smith and Keith Walk Green who dropped Brungard after a gain of eight. He has 82 yards rushing. He's checking out of it to the option play. They're just eating Boise State alive incredible because what's what's happening to them right now is there's no one out there to take on the pitch of the quarterback i mean somebody's got it if the guy goes out to take the pitch mark is just jumping up field every time and the guy that's got the responsibility of the quarterback is out of position so that's why they're just eating them alive right now in the offense we'll reiterate that in 14 games this season coming into today run guard that a total of 107 yards all season rushing 82 today they give it to Patton. He needed two for a first down, and he's very close. With exactly 10 minutes remaining, they stop the clock. They'll take a look at it. And they will measure. Brungard has 82 yards rushing, and Patton of the Penguins, 68. Boise State collectively 46 yards on the ground. And they desperately needed a running attack today, Boise State, to really have be effective in this ball game. But I am just surprised that Mark Brungard's done a great job of, on the option play and running a the play. They've run some during the season, but not as much as they have today. Saw so that they're about a foot short, third and less than a yard for Jim Tressel. Jim with an assistant coach at Akron. Jim Dennison, then at Syracuse for Dick McPherson, and then on to Ohio State before coming Youngstown State as the head coach, and now he is the athletic director as well. 
In the spring game, they bring back great coaches to coach each team in the Youngstown spring game. And this year, he brought back Coach McPherson and Coach Dennison. And Coach Mack. And his charges missed the Coach Dennison team. One guy, the keeper. Certainly appeared to pick up the foot they needed for the first down. And then with 9.48 remaining in the fourth quarter, a new set of downs for the Penguins. In the National Football League this afternoon, Detroit. A 27 to 16 lead over Minnesota. First and 10, Youngstown State at its own 32. time they made Brungard pitch it up gentlemen and was belted after a gain of one. Brian Smith at the bottom of the pile. Joe O'Brien also there. That time Boise State was in a better position to defense the option play. They had everyone covered. They had quarterback covered. Then they had, if he, if he pitched the ball, they had that covered too. People were in better position before. They had it in such a way that they had the quarterback covered, but nobody was around for the pitch. So if you went for the pitch, then the quarterback jumped up field, and that's what he's done very well in the second half. Down to 8.40, and the clock is running. They keep it on the ground and pass. And he burst it through to the 38-yard line. Picked up by Brian Smith. Gain of five. They'll need four yards on third down to keep possession. 8-19, the time remaining. Counter tra trap has been a very successful play for them all season. Being able to just hand it off to Sean Patton, blast inside, make something happen, put some yards in their rushing column, and that's what they've done very well. They're controlling the ball and the clock, and that's what they want to do. They're running the play clock down near one second on every snap. Run guard, the option. Run guard has the first down, out to the 45. Again, it was Brian Smith who made the stop. Why is you, baby? He has 15 tackles today, Brian Smith, but Mark Brungard is the story of the game. 91 yards rushing now and two touchdowns. He's thrown for the other, and the Penguins lead 21-7 with 7.35 and the clock running remaining in the fourth quarter. Number 78, I think it was 78, Ray Miller pulls. It's a cutback play. Dewan Miller has got to make the play inside, and he doesn't, and Sean is able to just run to the end zone sprint. Watch, watch the right guard. Watch the right guard, Ray Miller. There's the trap effort, and then now the cutback. He goes outside. They've got everyone sealed off, and then he pops loose. Good block execution, and then the cutback away from the flow because everyone is outside. They busted it wide open. Youngstown State, 28 to 7. Got to do something. We'll be back. Here's 
Jim Trestle said his team knew it had a chance to do something that no other team has done. That's when three Division I AA national championships in a four-year span. And the Penguins are quite a bit closer to that now, leading by 21 points with 7.15 remaining. And John Dorman to kick off. He tried to squib it. A terrific play made by the up man, Chadwick Bird, who was down on a knee and the whistle blew, and he took a pop and didn't like it. No flags thrown. But the Broncos begin with excellent field position at the 50-yard line. Good hands by Bird. Norma hit it sharply on the ground, but he scooped it up. Receivers split out. Adams the only back lined up behind Hildy. Hildy near side over the head of Lee Schreck. Tony Hildy's mom here today. She has attended every Boise State game this season. There's Merrill, you know, Tony's mother, from Pendleton, Oregon. Well, his grandparents have also made every BSU game this year. Second and ten. The draw, Adams got two, raising their rushing total in this quarter to four yards on the ground for the Broncos. And a total of 48 for the game. Leon Jones made the tackle. Blair Detlich, backup nose guard, is also in there, wearing number 95. down at eight. Certainly four down territory down for the Broncos. Bill D. by Housky. And he has a first down, a gain of 13 for Jared Housky. Art Carter made the tackle. Four catches today, 56 yards for Housky. Including his BSU career here today. It off underneath to Adams, east to the 29. Time is ticking off the clock, 6.25 and running, remaining, and they'll go without a huddle. Jones and Lee made the tackle. Second down and four. Shrek. Close to a first down. Reggie Lee stopped him. He extended the football toward the 25, needed to get to the 25, but they spot him down at the 26, bringing up third down and one, and we're under six minutes remaining. They'll be hollering the play to the wideout. There are three of them. They'll be option. They'll be picks up the first down. They'll stop the clock for a moment to move the chains. And it was Jones in on the tackle. I think Tony's inability to really be able to scramble and get away from the pocket consistently today has been a, a real problem. And I think, it, I think it's because he's banged up. I think it's because of his ankle, because of his shoulder. And he's just not been able to be as effective today. But he's a, really an intense competitor and has played his heart out today. And Hildy calls for a timeout. So now they have two remaining, maybe one and a half, based on the conversation we had earlier. But they have more than one. Officially, it is two timeouts remaining. 5.32 left in the football game. Youngstown State leads by 21. You'll see more college football action here on CBS Sports Friday, December 30th at 2.30 Eastern Time. It's the Sun Bowl from El Paso, Texas against North Carolina. And then on Monday, January 2nd, the CarQuest Bowl from Joe Robbie Stadium, South Carolina and West Virginia. What a great comeback after a slow start by Don Nealon's team out of the Big East. To get into a bowl game at 7-5. After the Boise State timeout, First and 10 for the Broncos with the 23 of YSU, 5.32 remaining. And Youngstown State a 21-point lead. Hildy goes to the sideline, and it is incomplete. Out of bounds. 
Kalski was open, and that goes back to what you've been saying several times today, Steve. With that injured shoulder, there wasn't enough zip on that ball to get it there while he was open. Yeah, that time, he, and that's where he's had a, he struggled all day today, I think, when he's had to throw the ball to zip route across the middle. Here, it just, it needs to be there with a little bit more velocity and a lot quicker in timing, so I feel like he's been off a little bit because of that arm and shoulder. Second and ten. Close to a first down inside the 15. And a late flag thrown as the players push and shove. Jones, Lee, and Hopkins in on the tackle. And the penalty is going against Boise State. A dead ball foul, a late hit. Offense. So that will back them up outside the 25-yard line. The official placing the ball down at the 30. And they set a dead ball foul, so it was after the play. And they lose the down as well. Third down and 17 yards to go. They need to reach the 13. And the clock is running five minutes remaining in the national championship game. Hildy has a man. It's caught close to a first down by Ryan Akibi. And marking him at the 14, he needed the 13, so he's about a yard short, bringing up fourth down and one. This time, Hildy again, not being able to throw right on the time that he typically wants to throw the ball, but again, he does throw to Ryan Akibi and makes a big catch when they need it. Coach Allen said Akibi was the fastest kid in Oregon when they went to recruit him out of West Lynn. 0 for 2 on fourth down today are the Broncos. This is fourth and one. Option. Hildy keeps. Good decision. First down inside the 10. He's down at the six-yard line. Been a terrific year for Hildy. He started last year, the end of the year as a true freshman. Then this season, he came up just shy of the single season records at Boise State for passing yardage and total offense. Nearly broke records of 20 years ago by Jim McMillan. They come on a blitz, they jump into the tight end, touchdown. Second of the game for Randy Matishak. But in between, there have been four touchdowns scored by Youngstown State. 28-13 with 4-19 left. And they'll go for one with the PAT from Erickson. Erickson on the extra point kick. Hildy the holder. And it's good. You want to look at Randy Mattishock right here outside he's gonna be right here and then there's nobody to pick him up it's all clean and so he's gonna make the read he's gonna make the read right here watch what happens there's inside blitz perfect no one taking the tight end again watch the effort no one's on the tight end great job by Tony Hildy to pick it up 28 14 we'll be back Pokey Allen, head coach of the Boise State Broncos. Pokey is a nickname. His given name is Ernest. Pokey was his dad's nickname when he was a young man growing up in Montana. He was little Pokey until he got to such an age. He became Pokey himself. And Pokey has decided to onside kick down by two touchdowns with 419 left. I would think the first clue is he's laying the ball literally on the turf. Mm -hmm. Try to get a bounce, get it to bounce once, and then bounce up high and then uh, put your speed men to try to make the play, try to get the ball. Interesting, they only have six players over on this side of the field, the Broncos. And they didn't get what they were hoping for from the kick, and Don Zwistler in on the hands team 
for Youngstown State. Fielded it on the hop with ease at the 42-yard line. What the kicker tries to do is get the ball to bounce one time and then get a high bounce, and he just doesn't. He kicked it directly right to him. That's not quite what they want, but if, he, if you get that bounce and then you get the high bounce, then you've got your speed men down that sometimes can bat the ball away and recover the football. Usually when you onside kick these days, you load them up on one side and charge all your guys down to the receiving team. You saw they basically raced four players the way they did to go to the right of the kicker. Nathan Toy, the ball carrier. You got it inside the fourth. You mentioned the Youngstown State players today going for their third championship in four years. The seniors, unless the situation changes dramatically in the next four minutes, will leave with three championships. And there are the first two rings that they have earned as a result of their titles in 1991 and again last year. The last three seasons in the title game, they played Marshall each year. This year at Boise State. To the 36, still no timeout indicated by the Broncos. And now they stop it with 3.31 remaining. The 1AA playoffs began in 1978. Youngstown, the second team to make it to the finals in four consecutive years. Eastern Kentucky did it in 79 through 82 and won it twice during that stretch for coach Roy Kidd. Georgia Southern has won the most 1AA football titles with four. Timeout called with 3.31 left. One timeout remaining now for the Broncos. The Penguins also have one. And we remind you to stay tuned for the RCA College Basketball Player of the Year preview with Billy Packer and Andrea Joyce. That's coming up next. And then at 4 Eastern time, College basketball, Kansas, ranked number three, including a win over highly regarded Massachusetts against Indiana. That's at 4 Eastern time today on CBS Sports. And they sense it now on the Youngstown State sideline. And they sense it as well on the Boise State sideline. and three an absolute must stop situation here for the bronco defense Patton 132 yards rushing today on 34 carries and a touchdown run guard 91 yards rushing on 13 carries and two dds and he's also passed 159 Patton hammered down appears to be short of a first down and again it was brian smith who has had a tremendous game on defense for Boise State. Tom Mason, the defensive coordinator, said Thursday night, Brian Smith is a great football player. He has been just that today. The Broncos have used their final timeout with 3.18 remaining. Back for the finish in a moment. In three minutes and 18 seconds, that banner may well be correct. The Penguins will go for it on fourth down on a long one inside the Bronco 34-yard line with 3.18 remaining. And Boise State out of timeouts. A punt in this situation would do much for... Youngstown State. Right in the end zone. They only gained about 13 yards in field position. And a first down here will just about put it away with Boise State out of timeout. Give it to Patton. Patton driving. And Smith is driving him back. But he appears to have the first down. Seventeenth tackle for Brian Smith, the junior from Tacoma. With 19 tackles, 13 of them unassisted in the win over Marshall last week. Tom Mason said toward the end of the year, the Big Sky coaches were talking about Smith as the best player in the league. And he does have it. 
by the nose of the football. And now it's just a matter of running out the clock for the YSU Penguins. I'm off. A win today would be the 14th of the season for Youngstown State. And this would be the first YSU team to win 14 games in a season. It would be their 14th straight win after the opening 10-10 tie at Stambaugh Stadium with Stephen F. Austin. Block running again. 250 remaining. 28-14, Youngstown State. Pat. And there's a guy you mentioned earlier, Steve, came out of nowhere, was in the program in 1990. Left for three years, got his situation back together. Came back, didn't participate very much in spring practice, just in days they went out in shorts. And then came out again in the fall, was expected to be the backup running back. But when Charles Perdue was injured late in the preseason, he became the starting tailback and has had a tremendous year. 140 yards today on 27 carries. Second and five for the Penguins. Run good. And he's close to 100 yards rushing. Another first down for Youngstown State. He took it to the 19. He has 99 yards on 14 carries after that gain of eight. He's almost matched his rushing goal for the entire season in today's game. Yeah, but the, his yardage is, is so much more important because he's been able to keep Boise State totally, uh, uh, you know, off balance in terms of running the option play. He's made big plays when he's had to. And that's what's been really, I think, is the one of the important keys of the ball game is his ability to make big plays on the option. A minute 40 left, and now they'll go to a knee. This will be the eighth straight playoff win for Youngstown State. They'll be 15 and one over the last 16 playoff outings. And despite the disappointing loss today for Pokey Allen, his second season, as head coach at Boise State has to be regarded as an enormous success. We asked Pokey Thursday night, we asked you in the middle of the summer what you thought the chances were of getting the national championship game. He'd say absolutely nil. I thought six and five was possible, maybe seven and four, but not this. And Coach Tressel has had that shower before. <laughs> and again, Brungard goes to a knee, and now they're pushing and shoving, and Joe O'Brien showing the leadership he's shown all year long to get Travis Thompson out of the way. This is a classy Boise State outfit, and Joe doesn't want anything to tarnish their efforts this season with ugliness late in the game. And that's, like you said, that's indicative of Joe O'Brien. I mean, he has been a class leader and a part of a great team. But the star, really, is this Youngstown State team. They're the one that gets the attention right now. <laughs> <laughs> and we know that Jim Tressel is popular in Northeast Ohio. Very popular, maybe. I'm surprised they wanted to run for president. They were afraid of losing him as a football coach. And that's it. They won't have to snap it again. The Youngstown State Penguins, the first team in the history of the Division I AA playoffs to win three national titles in a four-year span. Congratulations to Coach Jim Tressel and the Penguins of Youngstown State University. We'll return to Huntington, West Virginia for the presentation of the championship trophy in just a moment. Youngstown State has won its third national championship. 28 to 14, the final score over Boise State. Somewhere in the middle of the madness down on the field is Dave Logan, and we'll be going to him for the championship trophy presentation in just a moment. Dave's ready now. Take it away, Dave. Thank you very much, Sean. I'm joined now by Chuck Boone, the chairman of the uh, in, in double one, uh, Division One AA. Chuck, you've got a presentation you'd like to make to Coach Stressel. Well, it's a great pleasure for me, representing the NCAA and the one AA football committee, to present Coach Stressel with a 1994 championship trophy. He's had his team in the championship four consecutive years. They won it three of the last four, and that's a credit to you and your fine institution, your coaching staff, 
your student athletes coach congratulations uh, you know i tell you what it's unbelievable our coaching staff is the best in the country our kids are unbelievable our seniors led us through a heck of a thing and everyone back home in Youngstown, once more time, this one's for you. You know, Coach, you, you, I tell you what, they gave you a little bit of a scare there earlier, but uh, the best team prevailed in the end. What was the key as you got down the stretch, as you pulled away? Well, you know, I think the, the maturity that our guys show. I mean, our captains and our seniors are unbelievable. They're boys, their confidence, uh, they're unbelievable. Our coaches, they hang in there. Our crowd never stopped. People back home sending us vibes, the whole thing. Now, you won it in 91. You come back last year in 93. You repeat again in 94. What do you do for an encore? I mean, can you keep this thing going? Well, we pass the mic to these guys because these guys are the ones that did it here. Let's right. We'll come back and talk to these gentlemen maybe in a minute. Sean, back to you. Our congratulations to Thank you, Dave. Once again, the final score of the Division I AA National Football Championship game, Youngstown State 28, Boise State 14. Now let's join Andrea Joyce in New York.